Will you come down? This is my interpretation of the exemption at this time. So if it's upset a few people, I didn't mean to upset anyone. There is a funny forum and my, my comment got removed. These things just don't come down. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Sorry for the bad audio if it's not very good it's on my phone at the moment. As with all good vlogging, I forgot the memory card for my other camera. So we're having to do the backup, which is the phone. Anyway, those that have been with the channel for quite a while will recognize where I am right now. Welcome back to Glebe Farm, everyone. And it's the PB. So I'm just gonna go for a very, very short local flight and hopefully we'll have a bit of a chat about what Sub 70 um, is all about. For those that are new to Sub 70, for those that have been around Sub 70 for a while, Sub 70 has been around with us since about 2009, so it's not exactly anything new, it's just the wheels exemption that is new. But anyway, we're gonna chat about more bits and pieces of that in flight um, and come and welcome you all to the southwest of England. So I'm gonna get ready, do the final checks, still got to lift the wing, etc., on the machine, and let's get airborne. Oh, this feels weird being back here. It does feel nice though. I've got some muck on my visor. What's that all about? Temps are nearly there. Security wind and weather, wind is on limits, but I'm happy. Instruments checked and set running. We're on temperatures. Okie dokie, let's fly from Glebe Farm. Come on away! Yay! Oh, this is good. Oh, this feels wonderful. Let's get out. I don't think I'm going to be in the air very long today because I haven't got my flying suit on, but I have got my old motorbike gloves. So, temperatures are looking good, RPM's looking good. Right then, sub 70. Now, I am not. I am not the sort of person that says, I am the font of all knowledge. I'm not. I just have the experience of going through the system. So, over four years ago, or about four years ago, I had a wonderful flight with a chap called Jerry. Bit of a video here. Thank you, Jerry. It's still all your fault. It's going to be nice not to have to run. That is it. The nice <laughs> I can't run very well. Um, no, Joe, I appreciate you taking me up. Right, if you want to get in this side, yeah, yeah. don't want you to stand on anything. Okay. You get jumping and put your bum across on the seat. First time in 25 years I've been in a flex wing. I'd seen Sub-70 and the exemption had been in, introduced in 2016. That was the first year. It was about March-ish 2016. And so, I went, I like that. But technically, I was already flying Sub-70. Because, I can't seem to find it now, but in the old Cap 393, it had the full definition of what a Sub-70 machine was. And that gave basically an understanding and I learned about this sorry jumping back a little bit I learned about this in uh, because I was doing a long-distance paramotor flight and I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be illegal in carrying too much fuel now prior to 2009 they had this paragraph a b c and d d limited the fuel to nine liters but it hadn't got a weight specification 
They removed it for safety reasons, I understand. They allowed a maximum weight of the machine and fuel to be 70 kilos, or 75 if you carried a reserve. Now this is all for foot launched. Now paramotors and hang gliders were all called foot launched powered hang gliders. The definition in the air navigation order was a hang glider, so a paraglider is a hang glider by definition. Come on to definitions later. But in short, the, the joy of being able to carry a maximum uh, fuel load and a machine of 70 kilos was brilliant, or 75 if you carried a reserve. Because the reserve was deemed to be an extra weight, so they gave you that allowance. Now, when the exemption came in, thanks to a number of people who were working with the Civil Aviation Authority, they went, let's be, let's be logical about this, they want to do it, so let's, let's put some regulations in place. Um, what are we doing on temperatures? Temperatures are all looking good! Yeah, so in short, they went, well, we'll have a sub-70 kilogram exemption for wheels. Now, sub-70 definition seems to have morphed over time, and the understanding of what is bolted on and what isn't bolted on. I'm sure there's going to be things coming out in the future um, that, will, that will clarify that. Well, I hope so, anyway. You know, I'd, I'd like to think that it's moved on. So in short, we've been flying sub-70 exemption machines for 10 years. And as far as I know, there's not been a single fatality in the UK. Now please, this isn't about morbid um, curiosity, but as far as I know, there have been incidents, but there's not been major incidents with sub-70 because people have been getting training, um, etc. They're doing it what I would call an educated way. I, you don't know what you don't know, so let's go and get some education. That could be training. And so, sub-70 machines have, as with everything in aviation, pushed the limits. We used to have um, the limit for, uh, for microlights. That went up to 450. Now we've got 600. So we've changed over time and the regulations have changed to accommodate people pushing the boundaries. And I think in a healthy way, the machines at the moment have actually been pushing the boundaries in a really safe way. Now I did put some content out a while ago when I went camping. It seems to have caused some aggravation with some people. It wasn't meant to be like that. It was just going, look what we can do with this wonderful exemption that the Civil Aviation have, have given us. And so I just kind of went, this is my interpretation of the exemption at this time. So if it's upset a few people, I didn't mean to upset anyone. I just want to share what I understood the exemption allowed us to do. Anyway, moving swiftly on. The definitions of aircraft seem to have morphed as well. Um, again, some people like to be very particular about certain key words, but then completely blasé about others. Ultralight doesn't exist in the UK. Nanolight doesn't exist in the UK by any form of definition. You can call it what you want, but there is no definition of ultralight and nanolight in the air navigation order. If you find it, I will happily plead, plead that I was uh, ignorant to that fact and show me where it says in the air navigation order by any definition, ultralight and nanolight. We have sub 70 kilogram machines and microlights. There is a funny forum and my, my comment got removed. Uh, yeah, so I will happily be corrected. Now in Australia, they have a sub 70 exemption, but that is the trike without fuel. Now that is a really logical way to go in my mind, sub 70 without fuel. But, yeah, the joy of what we do at the moment with Sub-70 has allowed many people to go on to do other things. And I will put my hand up to that and go, I am very, very happy with what Sub-70 has introduced me to in aviation. And because of that, I then managed to get my National Private Pilot's Licence. The hours didn't count across, a little bit frustrating, but the hours didn't count across, but I had the experience. And so, by allowing me to do sub-70 meant I could progress quicker within the, um, the route to NPPL. The path is almost identical, if I'm really honest. You know, what I am doing was my other job. I don't talk about my instructing too much, but I look at the path I had for the BHPA's training scheme to get, because that was who I was insured with. 
you are required for sub 70 to have it here's the here's the requirement and so that allowed me to do my MPPL and then progressed on to getting the minimum hours for entry into doing an instructor's course and that has absolutely changed my life and for those that have met me uh, I am a bit of a child every lesson is fun it's a no apology aircraft and as such that just makes me enjoy what I do in any form so please don't think it's a rant hopefully it's a bit of an education um, but sub 70 for those that do it and I've done it brilliant love it let's not abuse that privilege um, and so I really really enjoy what I'm doing I'm really enjoying being on the PB today completely stress-free although my feet because they've been wet um, are a little bit cold now so I think what I'm gonna do is we'll probably wrap this video up here um, welcome to those that haven't seen S South Somerset Devon Hopefully I'll progress. There's a few airfields over that way that I want to get to. I want to go back down the south coast, back to our pottery. Visit where the 101st Airborne lifted, Band of Brothers, those that know that video. There's a link here on the screen now. So anyway, I am going to go and maybe do some touch and goes, practice circuits, um, see what the conditions are like, and uh, go back, have a cup of tea. And until next time, everybody, please fly safe. Uh, enjoy the channel. If you're not subscribed and want to follow me along, give this video a like and a subscribe. I don't ask it very often, but it really, really does help me uh, on the channel. Um, I'm not far off 7,000 now, anyway. Um, but yeah, have a good time everyone, and uh, see you in the next video. These things just don't come down. <laughs> I think, I'm not sure my camera, there's someone with a quad towing something on the back and I believe it might be <laughs> yep it's a little person that's just fallen off alright let's try and get down nice house Bob You come down. This snood is definitely working well. I miss my micro avionics one, but okay, let's get in. Oh, still way too high. It's a little bit lumpy today. Prepare to go around if required. Get down. Come on. <laughs> Right, there we go, that's looking a bit more normal. So, a bit of speed. And I'll go for a powered approach, keep the RPM where I need it. Bit of any sink. Oh, he's only gone and done it. Do you know what? We're going to end there. Because that was a greaser. Woohoo! Welcome back, Charles. <laughs> Welcome back to Glebe Farm. I've missed you. I've missed you. How'd you turn this thing off? <laughs>